A teraz chciałabym a, powiedzieć, że bardzo naszym ważnym źródłem inspiracji a, w projekcie Lean in STEM były zawsze Stany Zjednoczone i to właśnie dzięki impulsowi z ambasady Stanów Zjednoczonych mniej więcej dwa lata temu a, pomysł, żeby tę konferencję tworzyć powstał. A dlatego też Mr. Ambassador, in one of the last issues of the New Yorker, I read an article on the STEM education in the early age. Is it so that in spite of all the political controversies, one of the eras where President Obama can enjoy bipartisan support is the support for STEM education? Please, tell us more. The floor is yours. Okay, maybe here, because I got a little piece of paper. Is that okay? Okay. Jin Dobri, <clears throat> thank you so much, Bianca. Um, I'm just excited and delighted to be here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to answer Bianca's question um, as clearly as you'd like, but let me say a couple things uh, that, are, that are important from, from my point of view. Um, first of all, I have a little credibility problem today. Uh, I am a male who's been working for the United States government for almost 30 years now, and I'm supposed to say something of value or interest to mostly young women entrepreneurs and educators uh, in technology and innovation. So what the heck could I possibly say of interest to this group? Um, let me try two, two messages. First, um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to regain a little credibility through my family. Um, my wife, Catherine Jones, who's here, uh, is uh, an entrepreneur in the health tech space, as, as it's called. Um, she started out as a, as a foodie, as a trained chef, and began writing books about cooking, about then culture, about health, about nutrition, and at the age of 50 has transitioned into technology and creating a an incredible app for women with gestational diabetes. So I say that from the point of view that, that anyone from any background, it seems to me, can feed into the exciting movement that you all are focused on today. Um, but I also say family because, uh, you know, role models in one's family, whether it's your family that you grew up in or maybe a broader family that, that you're creating here, uh, are really important. And one that, when I was a kid, I always heard about was my great-great-grandmother, whom I never met, but she was British, my mother's British, and she finished first at Cambridge in math in the 1880s. But at that time, you know, women didn't get degrees at Cambridge. You were allowed to go, but you didn't get a degree. And so she had to wait to the 1920s to get her degree. Um, and she had this funny title. I don't know. I still don't understand it. I have to look it up. She was called the Senior Wrangler. I don't know why, but that was the title given to the person who finished first. And, and that, you know, in my life, having strong women who cared about uh, education, who cared about, um, you know, uh, giving opportunity was a great influence. But I still, you know, listening to and reading Sheryl Sandberg and, and the conversation going on now, I struggle myself with the messages I give my 19-year-old daughter about how you can combine success and likability and, uh, as, as a young woman. Um, and as you mentioned, President Obama does as well, uh, the father of two daughters, who speaks often about the value of STEM education and how, you know, half our population is underrepresented, underutilized. Uh, and it's, I think, one of the, you know, in that, in the United States, we're better at it than in a lot of places, is one of the real engines of innovation and growth that we experience. But, you know, there's, there's a long way to go. And uh, I'm always struck that from the time in the 1980s, when I was in university and we were talking about a lot of these issues, which aren't brand new, um, in some ways there's a lot of progress been made and in some ways it hasn't and there's a lot more to do. So first message is um, that what you are doing here today and what you're part of in this greater conversation 
is important and significant, not just for yourselves, but for our, for our society. And, and second message is what you mentioned, Bianca, in that you, will, you have a great partner in the United States, not just the United States government, the US Embassy, we're very proud and pleased to be a, a partner and a sponsor here today, but in the United States more broadly, and we'll hear from Steve Zipkes a little later, from education, from business, from society in the United States. Um, and we want to always be there to help catalyze this conversation. Um, here in Poland, uh, we've got some terrific examples of what we've tried to do from the United States, whether it's the embassy or other uh, parts of the United States, to encourage and support those who are breaking ground in this area. Bianca is one great example who went on an International Visitors Leadership Program in, in 2015, is that right? One of altogether hundreds of women that in Poland that we've sent on Fulbrights or, or leadership programs to the United States and have come back and created a network and, and created wonderful things like this conversation you're having today. Um, there are others who have been honored and recognized, and I don't know if, uh, if um, Olga Malankiewicz is here yet today. I know she was on the, Olga, thank you. So Olga was an, an MIT innovators under 35 recipient in 2015, is that right, Olga? So delighted, and then, and, and another fellow Pole who I don't think is coming here today, uh, um, uh, Katarzyna uh, Navrotek is also, was, was your partner in that for 2015. And two Polish people, unfortunately Polish men, what can we do, uh, are, are, are going shortly in July to the Global Entrepreneurship Summit that President Obama will host in Silicon Valley at the end of July. Um, this is uh, Pavel Nawicki and uh, Piotr Chemilewski. Um, Pavel is active in supporting biotech startups and, and Piotr in social media. Um, and both of them are members of the Young Transatlantic Leadership Initiative, another way we try to network and bring people together. So hopefully at the next Global Entrepreneurship Summit, we'll send a couple of women instead of only guys. Um, but let me just conclude by saying, um, <clears throat> in the, you know, in the, in the building to, dedicated to Copernicus, but, but in the country of Marie Curie, um, we really want to applaud and recognize and encourage and, and, uh, and share the excitement of what you're doing today, of what you're going to do over the next couple of days, uh, to stimulate this conversation and motivate and in draw on the potential of young women in STEM, in STEM education, and in high technology to make our world a better place. Thank you so much, Bianca. I'm delighted to share this moment with you. Thank you.